Hey kids! So it's Tool Tuesday and today I'm going to show you how to use an air compressor. This is actually called a pancake air compressor. Uh, it's basically just called that because of the, the shape of it. It's, it's somewhat flat and round like a pancake, but it's a little, you know, unless your pancakes look that thick. Anyway, I don't know who came up with the name. I didn't. So uh, anyway, that's why it's called a pancake air compressor. It's a portable air compressor and it, it's great to have around your house if, you, um, if you're a homeowner. Uh, it's a little more of an advanced tool, but you know, I've used it over the years to put air in my tires. You know, you could get a smaller air compressor for that if that's all you're going to use it for, but it, you know, you can use it for that. You can use it for, I've used it for um, a nail gun, for a staple gun. Uh, I've also used it to spray uh, texture on my walls. You know, if you get something that's moving a lot of air constantly, it's not really meant for that. Uh, that's why an air gun, you know, you're you're shooting a, a nail and then it, then you're shooting a nail where, you know, if you're spraying spray paint or you're spraying, uh, you know, you're spraying texture, there's a lot of air moving through there. So they're not really meant for that, but I have used it for that. So, uh, and so and I'm actually going to be doing a remodel of my kitchen. So there's going to be a lot of different videos that I'll be able to show you because it's been a while since I've actually had to do stuff on my house, but I finally need to remodel my kitchen. And so there's going to be a lot of different things and I'll, I'll be using this uh, as I'm doing that for certain tasks. So I thought I wanted to at least show you what the basics of it um, before you see it in my videos. So, uh, and before we get started, I do have a dad joke for you. You know, so when I was a kid in the United States, you used to be able to get air for your tires for free at the gas station, but now it costs money. Uh, you know, I guess that's just the cost of inflation. Ah, so anyway, let's get started. Okay, so a couple more things about this. This thing weighs about 30 pounds, so you can haul it around. It's got a nice handle on it that you can pick it up and carry it around. Uh, you can buy this by itself, uh, or you can buy it in a kit. I've seen it in a kit with three guns, or I think two nailers and one staple gun. Yeah, I think that's what I have. Um, and then you can, I think you can buy it with one gun. Um, but if you buy it just by itself, you don't get the hose. So you're going to need the hose in order to connect this to your tool. So I think it's worth it to get at least one tool because by the time you buy the hose, you've probably paid for the, <laughs> by the time you buy the gun that comes with it, at least one gun, uh, you paid for the hose. So I think it's just smart to, to buy it that way. So I'm going to just walk you through each piece here uh, and how to connect it. I'll show close-ups for you so that you can become familiar with how, how it works. This one's 150 PSI uh, and each uh, tool will have on it uh, what uh, PSI it needs to run at. If you run this, this is a staple gun, uh, and if you it says 100 PSI on the back side here. If I ran it at a higher PSI, uh, when I go to nail this, it's going to bury that, uh, that staple lower than you want it to. So you want to run it at the proper PSI so that it sets the nail or the staple at the proper depth. Okay. And I'll show you how to adjust that here in just a second. All right. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> it's kind of hard to see in the, with, with the light, but if you look at the back of this gun, it says a hundred 100 PSI max right there, right across there. Sometimes it'll be on a label, sometimes, but it, it'll, you know, you just got to look for it. That's where this one is here. It's kind of hard to see since it's black on black, but it's embossed or debossed, I guess you would call that because it's actually sticking up. But anyway, just thought I'd show you that. All right, so the first thing I want to show you is the connector. And this particular one has two connectors, so which is kind of handy. You know, you buy a second hose and then you can have two guns hooked up to it. And they, then you don't have to keep unplugging one gun and plugging the new one in. And, you know, so you, if you're working on a project that needs uh, staples and nails or a bigger nail and a smaller nail, you don't have to keep popping the gun off and popping on the other one. You can just have, have them both hooked up and then use one when you need it and use the other one when you need it as well. I think that's a great feature. But anyway, here's how you do this. All you do, it has a collar on it, okay? And I'll get a close-up of this for you. It has a collar on it. You just pull back and then you stick this one in and then you, and you pop it in just like that. Pretty simple. And then you just pull this out to pop it out, okay? And then you just put it, put it in, pull that sleeve back, and that's how that works. So 
pretty, pretty easy, right? And then if I was going to attach a gun, uh, same thing. You got the same type of collar here, and you just put it on here, pull that sleeve back. Right? It's a little harder if there's air pressure in it to do this, but anyway, that's how that works. Since there's no air pressure, I'm not fighting the air pressure, but that's how that works. You just slide that on, pull that collar back, like that, and it's locked in. Okay? And I'll get a close-up of that real quick. Just like that. And here it is on the gun. We're just pulling that back, removing it, sliding it on. There you go. Before we uh, plug it in, I want to show you a couple things, okay? I uh, figured I'd show this up close. So it's kind of hard to read this, but right here it says tank pressure. And that's what this gauge is. When, when we plug this in, this thing is going to go up until it's filled up and it should be cut off somewhere around 150 right? 150 PSI, because that's what it is, okay? And then this particular gauge is the amount of pressure that's coming out that we need to regulate for the, for the tool that we're using, okay? And so you start with this thing all the way open, right? It's not doing anything out here. It's all the way to the left. And then we go ahead and fill up the tank. So we're going to turn it on. Uh, it's plugged in, and we'll just turn it on. It'll fill up, and then it'll cut off once it's up to its up to its pressure. Then we'll adjust for that. Just wanted to show you a couple things though too. This is a cutoff right here. This, if you pull this pin, it'll actually let the air out. Okay, you pull that, the air will come out. I'll show you that in just a second. I just wanted to show you this before we before we actually turn it on. And then lastly, I wanted to show you this too. See how it's got the rubber feet as well. Um, that's nice, so, so it doesn't vibrate all over the place. Because if you ever turn this on it's gonna to wanna to walk on you. <laughs> so uh, those rubber feet help to keep it from walking. Um, here's your uh, plug. This lets out moisture, okay? If you open that up, it lets out moisture. You always wanna make sure that's closed because if it's not closed, your tank will never fill up. The air is gonna keep leaking out of there, okay? So you wanna make that, just make that hand tight. Okay, so let's go ahead and make sure it's plugged in and we'll fire it up. Okay, it's plugged in. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip this switch and it's going to make a lot of noise. So I'll probably cut the noise down for you for this video. But here we go. Okay, so it just cut off because it's right around 150 PSI. Okay, so that if you can see that, um, I'll try to, let me see if I can zoom in on that. Okay, I think you can see that now where it's just straight up. It's right at 150 PSI, so it shut off, shut off on its own. Okay, and so now I have air, but I kind of don't really have air yet because I don't have anything, reg there's nothing coming out. So I'm going to show you this. I'm going to attach this little... This is just a thing that um, you can spray air with. Right now, there's nothing coming out. It's because I've, I don't have any pressure coming out. So I just need to turn this up, and you can watch this dial move. See that dial? Let's just put it at 80 PSI. Now I have air. So that's one of the one of the things you can buy is this little tool here to blow off an area for you too. Right, if you got a lot of sawdust or whatever, you can blow it off with this. So, but then your thing, you're going to lose air pretty quick compared to a nailer because the air is flying out of here. It's going to want to start back up, bring it back up to 150 psi. Okay, so that's what that is. Let me just show you this pin that I told you about. 
Okay, so here's this pin I was talking about that'll release all the pressure that's built up in here. And this is what you want to do when you're done with your air compressor, because you don't really want to leave air uh, stuck in here, especially if you're going to store it for a long time. Uh, you know, if you're not going to use it for a couple weeks, it's good just to let all the air out. But here's the thing. Make sure your air compressor's off now, because if I pull this pin while the air compressor's on, it's going to just keep running because it's going to try to fill it back up with air, but you're letting all the air out, right? So if we turn this off and then we let this out, this is loud now. Okay, so it was letting that air out and you could see the dial was going down. Once it gets to a certain amount, you have to actually just manually hold it to let the rest of the air out. Okay, there we go. That's all the air. And then you can go ahead and dial this thing back. Okay, so that's what you would do if you were going to store this for a while. You just pull that pin and let it all, let all the air out. You would just loosen this, right? To let, and that can let the rest of the air out. If you want to completely drain it, you just would do that. But then when you go to use it again, you just got to make sure that that thing's screwed back in because, again, your tank will just be trying to fill up but won't be able to fill up. Pretty easy. You'd be able to figure out what's going on, but that's, you know, a fairly common mistake. You forget to put that, screw that back. Okay, so I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, you know, these things are pretty darn handy. I remember... Uh, <laughs> My neighbor laughing at me because I, um, before I purchased one, I was out trying to do some trim work um, in my front, uh, on my front porch because I kind of reworked it and I was, and I was out there with a hammer, tap, 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 and he came and said, Rob, you need to get an air compressor because um, then you just go, patoo, 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 patoo. <laughs> you just go right through it. It's so, it's so easy and fun. So you, you'll find yourself uh, wanting to build birdhouses and stuff once you once you buy one of these because they're they're pretty handy so so anyway i hope that was helpful for you thanks for watching and god bless you